On this episode of Cash Canada, we're going to be going after one of the hardest to get to virtuals in Ontario. On that plane. So this otter was built in 1953. I get to do my dream job. And uh, based on my research originally, it was serving with the, uh, the uh, military in Norway. I always wanted to fly a bush plane and, and here I am. It's time to take another Northern Ontario road trip. And it's really big. Wow. Holy doodle. A sign, top of the stairs. Oh. <laughs> We've got a whole crew with us today, including the Blue Quasar, the KBK crew, Lady Jamie, Dougie B, and the Bruce Zero. Oh yeah, I was just saying that, uh, the, you know, it's hard to believe that um, somebody in the early 1900s was able to build by hand um, a, a cabin with you know two complete full stories with a three-story you know uh, watchtower bell tower whatever and to think that uh, you know the sad part being that you know only a few short years later two years later after completion he drowned right in front of the cabin certainly um, you know a sad um, situation for for that but it's a beautiful landmark I think you guys are gonna really enjoy it there so yeah, that's really something, and we're really looking forward to viewing this. It's been on our, our bucket list for years now, and unfortunately last year we couldn't book with you because of COVID, but we're so excited now. Even though it's under construction and there's going to be scaffolding, we've heard it's an amazing thing to see. Oh, and we just wanted to introduce you to our pilot today, and our pilot today is... Tim Winger. Good name for a pilot, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm from the Listowel area, so awesome. yeah. yeah. Cool. Southwestern Ontario. Awesome. Good to have you with us, and uh, we're looking forward to going up and seeing the castle. Good to see you all. So this otter was built in 1953, and uh, based on my research originally, it was serving with the, uh, the uh, military in Norway. Uh, I don't remember how many years, but it served very long with the Norway uh, military, and then it went into private service, and it's been flying out of here for many, many years now. I love float flying, I love beavers, otters, and my two favorite airplanes, you know, so. I get to do my dream job, yeah. you know, that's the thing I tell people, it's like, uh, you know, I have no aspirations to fly with the airlines, to, you know, go into space. Several of our geocaching friends have been on this plane, and I'm going to make a call out to uh, Desafio, who says this is her favorite aircraft. I always wanted to fly a bush plane, and, and here I am uh, flying two of the most nostalgic air bush planes there is, you know. Also joining us today is our friend and one of our patrons, the Blue Quasar. Hey. Good morning, everybody. Never been here before. I can't wait to get this one off my bucket list. And uh, here, uh, Outsiders 2 already has this one. She does. She's actually completed all of the original Ontario virtuals. I have not, but after today, that will be uh, a different story. Awesome. So we'll get front passenger to go on up in first. All right. You can here work your way up in there. Without falling in the water. That would be unceremonious. Seat belts, we're getting them kind of sorted out how to use them. Pull a little tab down to the seat belt. That all making sense. We do want to remind you it's a no smoking flight, and we prefer you do not exit the aircraft during flight. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm Tim Winger, I'll be your pilot today. Clear. than all of us. <laughs> I hope that makes you feel better. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> oh, this is so exciting. This is awesome.
central point coming out, eh? It's hard to hard to see where the You can't you can see the water, you just can't tell how far away it is. Yeah. So there's no contrast, right? Yeah. But it's glassy. A lot of people are like, oh it must be really nice when it's like that. It's actually it's harder to get off of, to get off the water because um, it, wow. there's more surface tension, oh. right? When you try to take a piece of flat plywood out of water, but if there's waves on the water, you can lift it out easy, right? Yeah. Same way with this, so. It was a very smooth landing. It's, you can hardly tell you were touching down. Every once in a while, I'll get one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Job well done. Back there, it's because it'll drift quite a long ways. It's a lot of momentum here with all the weight we got. And you call us fat? No, no. I mean <laughs> the airplane. We got we got 7,600 pounds of of stuff floating here. So. and uh, put new roof on, um, putting in some replacement logs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Some of the logs had to be, uh, I think you'll see the ones with the caution tape tagged to them. Yep. They're ones they're probably gonna end up having to replace. Oh, okay. So, but they've got that, you can see the old chinking was that cement product. Mm -hmm. and the new stuff is that light, uh, darker gray and it's got, uh, it's, if you, it's more spongy. Oh, yeah. And it's a, probably a little better seal to the wood. The problem is with round log like that, if you have a cement product like that and it cracks, yeah. the water runs right in between it and then it rots the log, eh? So, you think, how did they ever get up there to the graffiti? But somehow they did. They must have stood on each other's shoulders or something. Mm -hmm. You'll see. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. I, I don't like it either. I don't like that kind of thing, but... Welcome to Jimmy's Castle, one of the hardest virtual geocaches to get to in Ontario. And this is an incredible, historic national treasure for Canada. And we're so glad at Cache Canada to bring you along with us to take a look. And we even get to go inside. Yeah. Well, we've been very fortunate that so far nobody has, has that, I, that I know of done any like we started a fire damage. in here or yeah. that kind of thing. Like, can you imagine? No, oh, that would be a but, disaster. But you know, yeah. people don't think. You know, yeah. like you know, it's surprising. There's a yeah. there's a very big uh, abandoned lodge just a few lakes over. Like it's a huge mm -hmm. spot, and uh, basically the owners. I don't know they. They, there's people yeah. still own it, but they just they're so rich they don't care and it's yeah. like oh, yeah. I, it's a gorgeous spot But people are going in there now. They're just smashing down the doors in the wintertime. They go in ice fishing and they're just Like they're just trashing these places. Oh, they're just that's sad. Yeah, it's very sad I think they figured Yeah, I think they figured why he built it, there's, you know, if you read the thing, there's several different versions of why they think he built it, but. I'm gonna go up top and see what the view is. Worth a second visit. As I said, it's not just smileys on a map. <laughs> <laughs> it's just amazing the scale of it. It is not a small structure and there's so much space. It's just wide open, big. And to think that one man built this by himself, alone, in the woods, and put all of this together and it's still here for us to enjoy and the government is looking after it is such a 
an amazing thing and it is such a national treasure for Canada to have this structure here and that we can come and enjoy it and bring you along with us to show it off. Amazing. I think this is a pretty cool location. We uh, took a long flight out here and that was cool in itself. I mean, taking a bush plane, a float plane out to a remote location like this. This is worth it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're so glad you could join us. Oh, for sure. And yeah. it's and thank you for planning because like this, it takes a group effort to do something like this. Yeah. yeah, and we're looking forward to seeing what you create and what we create and then sharing that with everyone and seeing the differences. We, uh, we work off each other and we get different perspectives of the same experience. That's what it's all about. Awesome. This is so cool. Hey, thanks for coming along with us. Yeah, and back in the day when he built it, he was the only person on this lake. Yep. There was no canoe trippers coming through or any of that kind of stuff <laughs> for the most part, right? So, I'm just in awe of somebody that could, and I, from what I've been told, he wasn't a man of huge stature, so he wasn't like uh, your, you know, huge, uh, strong person. He was not a whole lot bigger than me, I don't think. So when you think about the feat he did here, I have no idea how he got those logs up on those upper floors by mm -hmm. himself. I'm assuming pulleys and jib poles and things like that, but still, even the time to, to build something like that, added to the time it takes to do all this, it's just an incredible feat. And, and carry on daily life. And exactly, and yeah. feed himself and make a living, right? You yeah. know, he, he had to have supplies, you know, for the windows and the nails and things like that that he had to buy, so. Mm. It's incredible. It's amazing, and the scale of it is just amazing. Yeah. It's not a small cabin. It isn't. <laughs> I, I don't know what the tower was for, other than just an extra view over the place or whatever, but yep. it's it's beautiful. Hmm. I'm certainly in awe. Yeah, just a little brief little bit of uh, reading that I did. This, you know, people uh, said where he was from, I think it was the Ottawa River Valley, said that he would never make anything of himself. So he was determined to build a castle and show everyone, yes, he was somebody and he could do many things and look as what he did. This is amazing. Yep. <laughs> and you can tell you're flying along. Like, <laughs> Jimmy's castle, White Otter Castle. Look where geocaching brought us. I didn't know about this place. Did you? It was so amazing to be able to come here with Cache Canada and bring you along with us to share this amazing structure and get this virtual. Keep watching. There's more caches to be found. Where will geocaching take, take you. you? Wow. That was smooth, in and out, perfect. He nailed it. A lot smokier than last time, but well worth the views and worth the return visit. That was fantastic, and we got to see all the forest and islands on our way, and are on our way back. So this was the very last of the original set of virtual caches for me to find in Ontario. I found all the rest of them across the whole province, but this one was probably the most rewarding. Most excellent! It was certainly the most challenging to get to. I'm so thrilled to have been able to finish these off. Hi, Karen. Mainly because of the company. And you know, absolutely. And you know what, Dave and Karen, I love you guys. Thank you so much for putting this trip together. It was well worth it. I, I wish Judy could have been along with me, but she's already been and you know, but still, on to the next list to complete. Nice. We had an amazing pilot. We had a wonderful crew. We had a soft takeoff and landing on both ends. It was just amazing. Where did geocaching take us? To Jimmy's castle. You were a good group. Nobody jumped out of the airplane while we were flying. I think you enjoyed it uh, as much as I did. So uh, come again anytime. We appreciate you guys. And uh, I know a lot more about geocaching now. So that's awesome too. I'm going to be uh, looking at your website and nice. going from there. So cool. thanks very much, Tim. You're awesome. welcome. Thank you. Come and check out Ignace Airlines and Tim the pilot.
It's an <laughs> awesome, awesome trip, well worth taking. Thanks again for joining us here on Cache Canada for this trip to Jimmy's Castle. If you ever have a chance to get out there and experience it for yourself, we strongly encourage it. But if you can't, thanks for coming along with us on this excellent geocaching adventure.